Good. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Uh, first of all, do you have a website? We do have a website. It's called firewallandshield.com. Okay, let's get that up. Firewallandshield.com. Spelled out, I assume. We'll get that up, let everybody see it. <laughs> and there we have it. So, um, all right, Sigrid, I think you're calling me from North Texas, if I'm not mistaken. But with a name like Sigrid, we, we would think Norwegian. Well, yes, it is a Norwegian name. Uh, I'm actually, my namesake was a Viking queen. But I'm, I'm a third-generation Texan. I have uh, both Spanish and German blood in me. The German-American side kind of came up with that name. They love that name uh, because of the legends of uh, Queen Sigrid. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I got it. All right. Well, Sigrid, uh, Operation Firewall and Shield, a national call to repentance, fasting, and prayer. I guess we could flesh this out a little bit, you know, because uh, the apostles, having sat under Jesus' uh, ministry for uh, three years, and they had an incident where they were trying to cast out a demon, and they couldn't do it, and they finally had to call on Jesus. And, of course, he quickly cast it out. And they said, why could we not cast it out? He said, this kind requires prayer and fasting. So right. uh, so explain that a little bit to the people. Okay. Um, most people don't understand that when it comes to a nation, you know, people are saved uh, by accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But when it comes to a nation, it's what the people in the nation do, the people of God in the nation do to protect the nation, to save the nation. Mm -hmm. We were called priests of the kingdom for a reason. Um, we were supposed to stand in the gap for our fellow man and for our nation yeah. and intercede in heaven for them uh, with God. And this nation, because of our past political leaders, has fallen into terrible judgment. And I mean, and these judgments were not what God wanted for us at all. They are natural consequences of the sins that we've allowed in this country to go on unchecked because many of us did not know they were going on. Mm -hmm. And that is what led to the situation we're in. There's a progressive set of judgments that happen on any nation. Unseasonable weather is one of the first. Uh, all kinds of storms and um, flash floods, earthquakes, hail, um, tornadoes, hurricanes. Those are all considered judgments in the Bible mm -hmm. that come from the Lord because of what people are doing. Because certain sins defile the land. And when those sins defile the land, the land tries to vomit you out, according to Leviticus 20. So, but God always set a reset for that. That reset is found in Second Chronicles 7.14, which, if you start in 7.13, says, When a plague comes on our nation, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. Yep. So our wicked ways are that we've allowed all this to happen. We've done this by omission. Um but also because we need to cleanse ourselves completely so that when we go to a holy God and we intercede for a nation, we stand before him clean, like the priests of old, who mm -hmm. did the same thing. They would consecrate themselves before they even went out to put their hand on the sinner and the other hand on the lamb to transfer that sin to the lamb, slaughter the lamb. So the that scapegoat, that lamb as, it's, as it's known, for those exactly. of you that are not acquainted, that's where we get the term scapegoat taking the sin exactly. of one and placing it upon another. Well, God wanted us to have a peaceful nation. It says in, um, it says in uh, Timothy that we were to pray for our nation and uh, pray for our leaders so that we will live peaceful lives. Well, we haven't been praying. As a, as a people of God, we have not done that a lot. Now, I know that your readers are both probably Christians and non-Christians, uh, or your listeners, I'm sorry, but that works, but prayer works across the board, period. If you haven't been praying for your nation, 
if you haven't speaking, been speaking good over it, it's going to happen. I mean, this is going to be an issue. There's power in our words. Okay? But when the people of God use that power in conjunction with God's power, a few of them can change the course of the nation. And that's happened over and over again in the last 250 years. We just, most people didn't know that, but are 240 something. But basically, we, uh, prayer has, has had a huge impact on, uh, on things like, uh, the depressions that we had, the 1850 mm-hmm. depression, 1857 depression, because of huge united prayer that was going on in the nation at that time, pretty much became more of a mild glitch than it did an actual full depression. It's yeah, right and incidentally, it would have been over a lot sooner had the government not intervened in the way that it did. <laughs> yeah, it would have. And the interesting thing is, is that it has, the beginning of our nation, it has actually, prayer has actually, um, United Prayer has actually made some huge strides to helping us become the nation that we are. So in the case of 1670. Um, in the case of 1767, we had a huge, what they call Great Awakening, which is a mass revival that went up and down the whole East Coast in all of the colonies. And that was such a, a reset because of the prayers that they were praying at the time, because everything was as bad, almost as bad as it is now. Um, every time, in fact, that we've had these huge, huge revivals that have changed the course of the nation, Times were as bad as they are now, where they had corruption in the government, corruption in business, corruption in the police force. They had double-digit murders. They had gangs running the streets. Uh, their people were saying marriage was dead. Most people were either living together or going out on their spouses. Um, well, it was such the same as it was when time. Jesus walked the earth. <laughs> All of these things exactly. were happening then. It's the pattern of Pentecost in many ways. The people had realized that the 120 disciples had um, were praying that the, the prayers that they did day and night for 10 days actually set the atmosphere for what the Holy Spirit to come. They'd be setting that atmosphere right now because Amen. that that's what happened. That's why they had set a spiritual tone all around them, prayers, and interceding to God for themselves, for Israel, that when... Peter spoke, it went off like a match, and 3,000 people were saved. And that pattern you find in every one of the major and minor revivals, because I've studied them. In well, fact, I wrote a book on them I never published. But the, uh, the impact of people fasting and praying for their nation is so huge that uh, if we were really to allow to be allowed to see what Christians were doing at the times of major things happening in our country, they would be finding out that that it was their position on their knees that actually saved the nation at that time. Well, I believe, uh, and people will, will argue with me on this, but I personally believe that Donald Trump going down to the church and holding the Bible high, I believe that that signified uh, his, his submission to God and also for our nation. But it's important that we follow through on that. So uh, you have a, a 9 p.m. prayer uh, prayer time. Is that 9 p.m. Central, Standard, uh, Eastern, what? It's Central, 9 p.m. Central. We have it every night. Um, people are contacting me to get the, the prayer line because we, uh, we want to make sure that we don't get any... <laughs> We, we don't, don't get anybody that comes on and just disrupts yeah. everything. We don't want to. Um, we don't want to put that out. We know how the left is. We know know how they work. Yeah, exactly. But my my thing is that on the 14th, 15th, and 16th of August, we want to see a three day fast and prayer nationally. Or our desire is to is to have all Christians everywhere, all pastors, prayer leaders, everyone start praying and fasting this month for the nation intermittently, but we'd like to see a full prayer and fast because this situation with human trafficking that's been going on behind the scenes for the last 25 to 30 years has brought such a judgment on this nation that uh, we're in danger of the last judgment. 
of all the judgments that I've read about in Scripture, the only judgment we have not received is the one where people, without regard to women, children, or the elderly, take this country over and we lose our sovereignty. That's at the point where we're at right now. If we don't fast and pray, if we don't ask God for forgiveness for all of this, sins, all of this, human trafficking, all of these children killed uh, and sold and bought and, and all the things that are going on underneath the surface, all the graft and the creed and the greed, the idolatry. We have national leaders that are doing sacrifices in front of, in front of an idol called Molech, which is a big, huge owl in the Bohemian Garden. And I got that from people that actually live there. Well, I don't it. doubt it. Uh, we've never had a president uh, in the history of the United States, so who has gone after this the way that Donald Trump has? And yes, and because he's gone after human trafficking and all of this, this evil stuff underneath the surface, and these ritualistic things that they're doing to these people and these children, and torturing them and everything else, because he's gone after it, that's why they've been after him since the beginning. Yep. And not only that, he has thwarted them at every turn in uh, a lot of these accords that he disagreed with. China was going to be allowed to have admissions in the, that were, uh, that in 14 days would be as much as we would do in a year, but we were supposed to, to lower ours to the point where we would lose four trillion dollars in jobs and everything else. Yep. Now, this, une this inequity that's been going on has, uh, uh, this he has stopped, and he has made the Chinese pay the tariff that four other presidents did not. Their natural, righteous tariff that they should have been paying from the very beginning, that has caused bankruptcy in this country because we didn't get those taxes. Yep. And so we can't. It has put American companies anymore. out of business. Right. We must fast and pray. God Himself. Has told us, I mean, God Himself has been intervening in your affairs over and over. You just didn't know it, even in the last election, because you had prayer groups, prayer warriors like myself that have been standing in the gap. But the Lord is saying this time He needs more. He needs more people standing in the gap than ever before, and He needs it to be a national thing. I've actually written a, pre a letter to the president requesting that He. Um, that he would declare a three-day fast or even a month of fasting, the month of August. Either one, I'm happy with either one. But a three-day fast for sure on the 14th, 15th, and 16th of August. If well, people will, take uh, time course, during that uh, time, even if they can't do every three days, if they could do one day and just get before the Lord and cry out for the nation, grieve for the sins, which is what God wants. He wants us just to grieve. Like we were seeing when, when like we did when we were saved. We grieved about the sins we did. We asked for his forgiveness. And because he did that, he saved us. He can do the same for a nation when his people grieve the sins of the nation before him and ask for his forgiveness. And then he can do a reset. Now, some people don't believe that this can be done at this time because of the time period. But in Joel 2, the very first part of Joel is the description of the six trumpets. And that army that's come, that was in the sixth trumpet. And in the middle of it, he says, Even now, rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to me with fasting, weeping, and prayer. And get everybody to do it. The priests in front of the house and the door. The young ones, the old ones, everyone. And if you do that, he will answer. He will delay his hand of judgment. Because he's very merciful, he says. I'm a merciful God, and I will relent from sending disasters, he says in Joel 2. He has, one of the reasons I believe that no one knows the day or the hour, not even the son, but only the father, is because in Jeremiah 18, he reserved the right to stay his hand of judgment according to what the people did. And he is looking to us to determine how long this season is. Well, if we you're pray, right. He will, he will give us those four years. I've, I've always uh, liked the example of Nineveh. Um, yes. You know, and Nineveh got another hundred years because the people did repent in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work or not, guys, but I can tell you this. It won't hurt anything, and it may help. Uh, I, I know it'll help. 
it is not a it's not a it's not uh it's not a uh, panacea it does not eliminate the need for boots on the ground it does not eliminate your need to show up but prayer does change things and i know that god still hears the prayers and and you know it uh, said very clearly i think it was james that said the the prayer of a righteous man availeth much so um and and who is righteous those who are in jesus christ that is your righteousness because none of us can ever be good enough to please god right. on our own so on that well sigrid i want to thank you for doing that if people want to uh, actually become part of this what should they do i mean if they want to like kind of register and let you know they're on board okay there's two ways to do it um they can go they can um contact me via email through um sigrid at firewallandshield.com and that's both words put together firewallandshield.com and uh, sigrid is spelled s I G R I D as in David, and, or you can do it to Andy at firewallandshield.com, firewallandshield.com, or you can call my phone number 254 718 0395. Contact us. Um, we would love to, we're going to be putting a lot of things on the website that you can pray for, including what's been going on behind the scenes that most people don't know about. But the Chinese, I've got some great videos on, that are very short, relatively short, that give you a, a real lowdown on what China's been doing in the South Pacific, what they've done in our country, how they've subverted our process for a long time, and while, how we managed to get to where we're at right now. Um, those will be going up on the website in the next day or two. But there'll be a lot of, a lot of information that people can pray about, but more than anything, pray for your nation because we believe in not just prayer we also believe in action there's there are people you can be writing to take care of some of these situations there are people that need to hear you and what you have to say about your nation and um, and one of the things we can do is with a hundred thousand with a hundred thousand signatures anything can be addressed at, uh, with the white house and congress and they have to respond and it takes 150 signatures to get any kind of um, petition up. So you have you have voices. Not only do you have voices that need to cry out to God, but you have voices that can can actually change your nation. But they, mm-hmm. but if you need a place to come to get that started, this is one place to do that. Well, this is part of the reason they shut down the church. But I I can honestly tell you that by and large, the church in America just like the Church of England, is dead. It is now up to the laymen, those people that actually have that connection to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's now up to you to make the difference. If you're waiting for your pastor to do it, quit waiting. He isn't going to do it. You've got to do it yourself. And uh, so I'm just asking all of you to do that, uh, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Jew, or whether, whether you're a, an agnostic or an atheist or a pagan, I don't care. If you love this country, this is something you should look into. And, of course, as I have said many times, and I'll say it again, Acts 238 is for everyone. So check it out. It's easy. Do it. And uh, Sigrid, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to call and let us know about this. Uh, the website is Fire and Shield. Dot com excuse me no, firewall firewall, firewall, and firewall and shield, and shield. Dot com. com firewall and shield dot com and of course you put in a firewall if you want to stop your stuff from getting burned up well we need to put in a firewall in America that uh, we're on the front of it right here if you missed my opening monologue uh, you might want to go back and listen to that later so uh, anyway thank you thank you cigarette I appreciate you taking the time you're welcome, sir. God bless you, and God bless America. God bless America. We need God's blessing. Yeah. So, and you and guys need to, to you guys need to go to your pastors and tell them to wake up, and and tell them to get on the ball and make let's make the church relevant again. Uh, let's make the church great again in America. Yes. Yeah. We can do this. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, 
We're going to get to uh, Witten.